Oh man. No, he won't. Oh, I Gene, what's going on around here? What kind of shit are you running? Get that guy out of here. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. All right. Yeah, you did. You did. Um, meeting called to order. Roll call, please. Councilman Dan. Here. Councilman Brian. Councilman Harold. Here. Councilman Stanley. Here. Councilman Hadmaker. Here. Councilman Fair. Here. Here. Do I hear a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The prayer of this um, evening will be given by Councilman McGann. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Before we pray, let's take a moment of silence in memory of Margaret Calhoun, longtime Clinton resident, longtime Clinton business person, taught at Clinton High School for 30 years, so we're going to miss her. So let's have a moment of silence. Father, it's a privilege and a pleasure to serve and to be in this country. We pray that you would heal our wounds. We pray that you would bring us together, that you would make us strong, that you would share with us the love that we need to have in this country today. Be with us in all we do. Help us to conduct the business in the way that you would have us to conduct it, that we may truly be honorable in your sight. For it's in thy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Larry. Here a motion for the review and approval of minutes of the previous meeting dated September 28, 2020. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. This time we'll hear from anyone that has any grievances or praises. Communications from the mayor. I have um, a few things I need to go over. A um, couple of proclamations. And I do want to recognize, um, once again, Gail Cook for the, um, the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. Now, Gail, is this, where, is this the fourth year or fifth year? Okay. For those that don't know, this is not an easy thing to, to obtain, and I'm very proud of of uh, what Gail has done since she's been here, but also the, um, the standard in which she leads by. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I, once again, very much appreciate what you do each and every day, and I'm glad you're a part of this crazy mess. So, <laughs> makes me feel a little better. <laughs> um, we have a couple of proclamations. Um, Zach, do you wanna do one for yes. the Red Ribbon? Is it Red <clears throat> Ribbon? Yes, Red Ribbon Week. Proclamation, whereas the city of Clinton, like hundreds of other cities across the country, has felt the many impacts of substance misuse, particularly while these are being confounded by the COVID-19 pandemic, and whereas the red ribbon was chosen as a symbol commemorating the work of Enrique Kiki Camarena, a DEA agent who was murdered in the line of duty and has come to represent the belief that one person can make a difference, and Whereas businesses and other entities throughout Clinton and Anderson County will display red ribbons and lights as part of the I am one campaign symbolizing the role each of us can play to be proactive against substance misuse in our community and whereas the ASAP coalition and the ASAP youth ambassadors have been working to eliminate stigma, increase knowledge, reduce access and encourage a drug-free lifestyle and whereas success will not occur overnight our patients and continued commitment to substance misuse prevention are imperative and whereas the red ribbon campaign was established by congress in 1988 to promote this belief and encourage a drug-free lifestyle and involvement in drug prevention efforts and now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of clinton do hereby proclaim October 23rd through October 31st as Red Ribbon Week in Clinton, Tennessee. 
and encourage all citizens and sectors to participate in substance misuse prevention activities, not only during Red Ribbon Week, but all the year long. This proclamation was adopted this 26th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2020. Any motion to approve that? Okay. okay. Thank you, Zach. No. I do want to recognize um, one person here that uh, Mr. Sanderson, glad you were here. I'm not sure. You know why you're here? I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you going to do what Archie tells you to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a, a little surprise for you. You've been tricked. You're here for us to give you a proclamation. Um, you know me, I'm not going to get choked up. But um, if anybody would like to come down and stand with me, um, Jim, if you want to stand, you can just sit right here so you don't have to, I don't have to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> and family, if you want to stand up, that'd be fine too. Just do what you want to do. First met Jim in 1970. He and my mom worked together. And um, I think now, today is, it's, today is the Head Start program from what mom told me. So that was 50 years ago. And one thing I can always say about Jim, in my life, he's always had a smile on his face. He's always glad to see you. Except for men's church softball. <laughs> now you want to get to see somebody get fired up in church softball now, Jim got fired up. But other than that, he always had a smile on his face and, and he was always, it was always a pleasant conversation. And I'm very blessed to know you, I appreciate that. So, I'm going to try to get through this real quick. <laughs> Proclamation, we the City Council and the Clinton City Schools Board of Education commend and recognize James Jim Sanderson for his contribution to the City of Clinton as an educator and community leader. Whereas Jim Sanderson began his, began his teaching career at the age of 22 after graduating from Georgetown College in Kentucky, and in 1981 obtained his master's in education from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville with a concentration in school leadership and supervision. And whereas Jim moved his family to Clinton in 1970 and began his career with Clinton City Schools in an art, as an art teacher at Clinton and North Clinton Elementary Schools. And Jim's career with Clinton City Schools evolved from teacher to supervision of teachers and instruction to assistant super superintendent with many different roles along the way. And Jim worked in an administrative role for Clinton City Schools for 28 years until his retirement in 2009, finishing a 39-year career in education. And Jim has served this, the Clinton community in various capacities and has always been willing to place his concern for the public good ahead of, ahead of his personal interest, thus earning the admiration and high regard of other civic leaders and the affection of a host of area residents. And if there were, was one characteristic that distinguished Jim's career as an educator and public servant, it was his enormous capacity for hard work as no one ever put more of himself into the job of working for his community than Jim did. And therefore, the mayor and city council of the city of Clinton, along with the Clinton City Schools Director of Schools and Board of Education, wish to express our sincere appreciation and thanks to Jim Sanderson for his distinguished service to our community and urge all citizens to pay special tribute to this very special member of our community. This proclamation adopted on the 26th day of October, 2020. Jim, I wanna thank you. I always say that, I think a lot of people say that, you know, Clinton is, has a lot of people to make this town special. And you and Dee are certainly one of those people. So. I want to say I love you, and we'll miss you, and you all come back and visit sometime. You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Roger.
All right. Um, so we can keep a secret, Jim. Shayla can keep a secret, too, just so you know. She did a very good job. Um, for those of you, um, Jim, growing up in a small town, you have lots and lots of different daddies. And Jim was certainly one of my, one of my many daddies who helped raise me on Riverbend and Redbud, along with Sherlane and John in the front yard and lots of, lots of hide and seek and lots of fun times. But um, Dee took care of Mama for many, many years. In fact, I told her one of the reasons she must be leaving is she's so sad that Mama's not here for her to fix her hair every Thursday. <laughs> and um, so they are very, very special to the Dean family, but very, very special to me. And my history, of course, like, you know, I was an alumni of Clinton City Schools, but Jim was so kind to um, hire me as a summer worker, and he taught me how to scrub gum off of desks and to clean chairs. He never allowed me to use the buffer. I never could use the wax buffer. He didn't trust me that much. But he was always so good to give us summer jobs and, and to keep us busy. And I remember one specific time where I had overslept and I came to work and threw on makeup really, really fast and evidently did it in the dark and had too much blush on. And Dee came, you probably don't even remember this, but you came in central office and you just looked at me and you shook your head and you said, bless your heart. <laughs> But I love you all dearly. You are family to me. You meant the world to, to Mama and Daddy. And I wish you all all the best. And Jim has promised that he will continue to answer my cell phone calls because when anything maintenance or anything goes wrong with the building, you can guarantee that he has the history and knows it right up here of when it broke, when it was fixed, who I need to call, and what we need to do to, to get it taken care of. So I, I certainly appreciate it. But I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Is there anyone else like this? speak share a story does dr violet want to say say anything, Vicky, you want to say anything? <laughs> jim has been a very special person to me and d <clears throat> has also uh when i first came uh my very first contact d you probably don't remember was at church uh, I still have uh, the book you gave me. It says, Life's Too Short to Fold Your Underwear. And she, <laughs> I have that book, and that is so true. Uh, but Jim has um, been a very, very special person in my life, and he has helped me when I was director of schools. And uh, I rushed back from uh, out of town today so I could be here to celebrate this special time with you and your family. Uh, this is your special person, and I just want you to know that. Um, not only to Clinton City Schools, but to many, many of us. And uh, we appreciate all of you. Uh, and thank you, Jim, for all you've done for not only this community, but for the school system also. Committee reports, um, city school board report. Ms. Johnson. Well, I'm back. <laughs> okay, a couple of updates regarding Clinton City Schools. Uh, tomorrow is our 50th day of instruction. So uh, we are well into the 2020-2021 school year. We continue to do very well with the reopening of school given the COVID-19 situation. Our total counts as of today with cases that we have had to contact trace and report to the health department are three students and one teacher since school, the school year began. So we are uh, very pleased with that. Um, I do want to be transparent in letting you know that at Clinton Elementary two of those cases fell within the same classroom. So we have closed two of our fourth grade classrooms for two weeks at this point and we knew when we did the reopening plan that that was going to be something that we were going to have to encounter as the as the year has gone on uh, we have no intentions of ever shutting down an entire school or the entire district but just classes as they need as they need to be closed um, a huge shout out to all of our parents 
who have been so willing to work with us on that. Um, uh, the two fourth grade teachers are going to be teaching virtually from their classroom each day, and so the kids have already picked up their Chromebook and picked up all of their um, all of their instructional supplies and the teachers will be doing Google Meets with them throughout the day and so instruction will continue and we look forward to them being back with us soon. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the last time I spoke with you, we were getting ready to have our Department of Education, uh, the U.S. Department of Education virtual showcase. That went uh, and was an extremely successful event. They spent about uh, an hour and a half with us where we were able to showcase our reopening to um, one of the, the secretary, assistant secretary over secondary and elementary education at the United States Department of Ed, but the governor and several other um, key figures were on that and got to hear about our reopening of school and then they asked one of our teachers to do a blog so that they could um, showcase our reopening on the department US Department of Ed's website so Lindsay Dungan a third grade teacher at South Clinton Elementary School graciously wrote her personal story about what it meant to her to reopen in the middle of a global pandemic and some of the things that Clinton City Schools was doing so I'll make sure to send that link to you all because it is certainly nice to have Clinton City Schools published on the United States Department of Ed website a couple of other things that are going on at Clinton City Schools. Over fall break, we use that time to do some playground facelifts. So South Clinton, E.T. Stamey helped us pull both of these projects off. But um, South Clinton Elementary received a facelift with removing some mulch and some play structure um, areas, and it gave it a nice little, a nice little uplift. And then at Clinton Elementary School, we did some um, upgrades to the upper playground. We um, did some track repairs and then actually put the track lines on the track upstairs, uh, up on the upper playground for our cross country and track. So those are looking very nice. Um, wanted to do a shout out to Uriah, one of our third grade students who actually with our Blaze cross country, he qualified for state. And so he went and represented Clinton City Schools at the state tournament and did very, very well. He got a personal best time. So we are super proud of him. And then probably my best, most favorite news to share with you tonight is that we were so saddened when we could not do band this semester for sixth grade just with the research that was out there about you know the aerosol and and blowing into instruments which out of an abundance of caution we wanted to to protect kids as much as we could so our sweet Matthew Case who is our band director came up with a wonderful idea and so in place of band we now have a ukulele club at each one of the elementary schools and so he is uh, teaching our band students how to play the ukulele this semester and then when we safely return to blowing into instruments we will transfer for over to the uh, to the instruments but I will tell you that I'm not quite sure if there's more students in that ukulele club or teachers in that ukulele club so if you hear some joyous Hawaiian music playing from the school system you know exactly what is happening so we're trying to make lemons out of or lemonade out of lemons here and we're doing a good job any questions for me any questions for Kelly <clears throat> yes uh, Miss Johnson how are you today well I'm doing great <laughs> Mr. Stamey how are you <laughs> Uh, let's go back to, uh, I guess, the COVID in March and uh, all the way to when you went back to school. You served 70,000 meals. Uh, fall break, uh, you gave out meals again and you were right around 1,000 for the three days. How easy is that to put together? Do you rely strictly, maybe something uh, Scott Ray needs to answer, but how quickly does this get put together and where does the money come from? Well, I will tell you, it's been a huge blessing moving to Airmark because Airmark has the capacity to pull things off in a very quick manner. And so they actually were the ones who, who did the legwork behind that, but that's a federally funded program through the USDA. And so they actually have continued, it falls under what's called the Seamless Summer Feeding Program. But we actually just got word, Scott Ray was on a webinar the other day, that they are continuing that through the remainder of this school year. So all of our students in all three schools can receive free breakfast and free lunch through the remainder of this school year. And that will include, we'll continue to serve during the breaks as well. Mm -hmm. I think we served over 800 meals, I believe, during fall, Real close to during fall break. Yep. So yep. that need is certainly still there. Well, thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Scott, have anything? I do not. Man. <laughs> we'll, miss you. we'll miss you this month. He's ready. You ready? Yes, All sir. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was always taught to follow the director of schools, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I follow her. 
No, I want to thank the city council and school board for uh, giving me such an honor. I, I appreciate it very much. It, I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it means a great deal to me. I mean, the world. Uh, I don't know, Gina, did you, did you get everybody's name <laughs> that's with me? I didn't know I they were gone. Okay. You didn't, we didn't, why don't you introduce everybody that's with well, you? Well, uh, uh, where's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> she left me, you know. She's getting, a, she's getting a head start on me, I guess. <laughs> Y'all know D. Uh, my son, John, is there, and Misty. Miss T with a T, uh, his, his friend, and uh, the little lady with the black bandana there, that's the new state coordinator of school health for the state of Tennessee. So we're very proud of Shayla. And uh, the little girl in the blue is our baby girl, Gianna. So we're very proud of all of them. But I do appreciate you all, and Clinton meant uh, you know, I, I moved here when I was 12 years <coughs> When I was 12 years old. <coughs> and uh, had the privilege to grow up with Larry and his mom. I can remember one day in Sunday school, I was misbehaving. And, you know, she reached over and pew, <laughs> I said, behave, Jim. And I said, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, First Baptist is, means the world to us, too. Dad was pastor there. And then Bill was pastor at South Clinton. And uh, I could go on and on. So, you know, so I've basically been here 61 years. And the Lord is leading us back to Georgetown, uh, where Dee was born. And then I was born about 20 miles away from her in a little old town called Midway. But uh, we didn't meet till I went to college. And I was up there every summer working on my granddad's farm. So, uh, but anyway, we, we appreciate everything that the city has done and the growth. And I do notice the exemplary signs that the schools has achieved as we come into town and the new signs of the historical town of Clinton. You all did a great job on that. And uh, I just praise all of you for what you do and Roger what he does is the whole city of city manager. So thank you very, very much. Thanks, thank Jim. You. I don't know about you, but I'd take Jim over Scott any day. But. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Was that my outside voice? Was that my? Clinton Regional Planning Commission report, Councilman McGann. The uh, Clinton Regional Planning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals met on October 5th. The Board of Zoning Appeals had no business on that day. Uh, new business for the Planning Commission, applicant Wes Tellery and Jimmy Taylor requesting site plan review for property located at 500 <coughs> Baxter Avenue. Uh, there wasn't anybody there to present their, uh, their plan, so that was deferred until a later date. Also, a review of the agricultural overlay, which we discussed at our last council meeting. Uh, the draft waiting, really waiting for recommendation from City Council on how we talked about the City Council giving approval on some of those plots. So they're kind of waiting for that to construct how we're going to go about it. And also review of non-residential accessory structures, temporary mobile factories built or, or factory assembled structures, working on some uh, guidelines of how to deal with that. Uh, so that, uh, that was it was a lot of gender. Any questions for Larry? Do you, uh, excuse me, Mayor. Uh, do you have any update on the Vidoc? Maybe Roger uh, saying more. I know the exit 122 is really a good job. It takes the stress off the five o'clock uh, traffic from done well. Yeah, it, it, it has went out on bid and been released. And I got a report a couple of weeks ago. I think we're supposed to start back <clears throat> within the next 30 days construction. Good. I think we're looking now at a July 2021 that's removing the sidewalk, restructuring it, and what's going on underneath with the framing? Actually, well, it's actually some of the rebar going from the road to the sidewalk at some point. They really don't know when, where, how it got cut. So they had to replace all the rebar, the structural support, so okay. they didn't know that until they actually busted the sidewalks up on the first phase. Good. 
And also, unfortunately, you know, it's not good news, but at some point it's probably going to be one lane each way. Yes. So people better get ready for that traffic blob. Can you, um, and of course, not everybody knows you've been under the weather, Roger, for this this, this month, but um, did you have any um, updates on this overlay? I mean, when you can present that we to did, the we, council? Uh, you know, you may want to get Friday. your... We talked about it Friday, and due to me being out, we decided just to postpone it another month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can look at it. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Gann? Thanks, Larry. Clinton, Utilities Board Report. Councilman Fair. Yeah, three things. Uh, CUB Board met on the, the 15th of October, <coughs> and um, a couple of highlights I wanted to, to, to hit. The uh, approved, It was approved to... Um, we developed a plan of what we were going to do with the money uh, that we were going to receive. I say money, the assets we were getting back from TVA pandemic relief credit allocation. And so the board approved uh, a plan that we were going to roughly about half of that was going to be returned to the residential and small business owners. Um, they'll see that in the form of um, basically a rebate on their, what is my words, is rebate on their bill. It's going to be nominal, but it's 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 the money's going back to to the residents and small business owners. The remainder will be applied towards the losses that were incurred uh, due to COVID, and uh, so I we're one of the utilities I think uh, around here that's given something back. There's several that aren't giving anything back to their to their rate payers. Um, secondly, um, CUB had an annual safety audit. And we had an uh, outside entity come in and, and did a safety audit, and CUB received a perfect score on this annual safety audit. That's critical because what we do, or is what they do at CUB, is obviously very dangerous when you're dealing with electricity. And uh, we've had, we actually had a, uh, an, an incident that occurred last year. And um, so it's something that I know they take great pride in that, as, as the safety. Along with that, also, periodically, CUB has a water system audit, which to me, that's real significant because that's what I put in my body every day, right? You know, what am I bathing in and what am I drinking? And I drink my water right out the tap, so I'm sort of sensitive to make sure we've got good water, and I think we all are. Well, we received a perfect score. So out of 599 different um, uh, issues they looked at, we scored perfect. So that gives me great comfort uh, as I drink this good cold water we have that I'm assuming probably came out of a tap. So that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions for Zach? Would the county be considered that good drinking water also? Is it? Um, I can only speak for CUB. I'm sure they, they, they do a great job too. I think it all comes from one place. Though. The clinch, right? Yeah. Yeah, they don't import their, their water, so I don't know. Hey, Zach, one thing I was going to recommend, and I was just actually thinking about this when I saw your report. I think I think we've partnered very well, CUB and the city has partnered very well as far as, you know, being developer-friendly, trying yep. to get some things out there, and, and I'm hearing from developers that things have changed for the good, which is a good thing. Um, one thing I've been hearing about more consistently is, you know, some of this land that has a, a potential for high growth, high development, just the, the utilities aren't there. I mean, they, they can get there, but the costs are so astronomical from a developer standpoint, even a homeowner standpoint, it just doesn't, it's just not making sense right now. So my thought is, and I saw Greg last week, I should have, I didn't, I didn't have that thought in my head like I do now, is to, for CB to identify and I don't know if this is over their areas of responsibility, but in a way it should be because it's an investment, is look at areas that they cover and see where the needs are. Where's, where's these high growth areas that they can identify? And I'll give you one is on the, as you're going towards the interstate down Char Charles Seavers past the fish hatchery, everything on that right side up until it's developed is there's no utilities. So if somebody wants to build something in there, they have to take the utilities under the road and provide it that way, which is a very costly sum for an investor or, or developer. So I might be an area, but there's got to be maybe even have a number, maybe have four or five areas in, in, the, in the CUB network that needs to be identified and maybe CUB can be, in, take the, the, be proactive 
in, in, in developing those and creating those utilities to promote more growth in our area. Well, and that's part of some of the policies and procedures update and review that, that, that we've already initiated and approved. There's ways that they can recoup, recoup those costs. I think the biggest fear is, is if we subsidize uh, development like what happened up in, in um, Campbell County and some of those rarity properties that were riding high in 06, 07 and nobody thought that anything bad was going to happen and then the housing bubble hits, you know, we don't want to be on the hook for, you know, a significant cost that then it's at the it's at the ratepayers um, bottom line. So I think there's a proper balance to be struck because I hear you and I and I agree with the I agree with the the spirit of what what you're what you're saying. Uh, the balance has to be struck though with you know CUB and the ratepayer because that's who we're talking about. The ratepayer is not doesn't need to subsidize the developer but we also need to promote growth right. and so there, there there is a i think we've struck the balance and, and vicky feel free to to jump in madam vice chair of cb is is in the audience with us um but but to your point is i think you could always associate the investment you're looking at making what what the the, the how how of a risk it is from getting your money back you know i'm looking at very you're, you're talking about providing utilities for uh a whole community you know subdivision and I'm not I'm not necessarily talking about that I'm talking about you know again more of a simplistic ex uh, example is, is would be on the right side of Charles Seavers where the high the probability of that being developed on that side when you put utilities is got it is, is, uh, is at some point it's going to be developed mm -hmm. with with very little cost investment costs but have that site ready so to speak where that's already there and it's not going to be a roadblock for somebody to make that investment I think it'd be something worthwhile to look into. I, I, I don't disagree with that. Okay. And you're talking about the burden of the, of the current tax rate payer. Well, I think if, you, if you're we're, progress, we're, we're proactive making those investments early on, then it's I think it assures that the rates are going to main, be maintained at a low rate because uh, we're, we're, we're expanding the business. We're, using, we're expanding the rate payers to, to ensure that those rates stay at a, at a very competitive level like they, they've been for, for years. So that's just my thought. So if you want to take that on to yeah, the board I, and maybe I talk to Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll discuss it next Thank board you. meeting for sure. Thank you. Any other questions for Zach? Larry, you have anything else? on? No, other than I think, uh, Roger, we do have an opening that we're advertising, right? Yes. Yes. For the director, Green McAdoo. Is there a target date on hire someone? Uh, hopefully by the 1st of December. So if somebody's interested in applying, is it on our website? Yes. Is it on Green McAdoo's or Cities? Both? It's on the city. Okay. All right. Thanks, Larry. General Government Report, Mr. Houck. Thank you, ma'am. We'll be like Scott, keep it short. Uh, December City Council meeting, due to the holiday schedule, we recommend changing the December mm -hmm. Council meeting for Friday, December the 18th at one vote. What's the date on that again? December 18th. Friday. Friday. Here, a motion to move the so move. December second. council meeting for the December 18th at 1.30. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And you're going to come out with, um, as far as what our plans are, as far as the traditional luncheon and all that, will be announced as soon? Soon. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Well, the only thing I got is kind of update on Magnet Mills. Um, pretty much the contractor has been moved in. Pretty much right after our last council meeting, they've been working every evening, usually from two to three, and works with ARC. Uh, I notice they've got quite a bit accomplished. Uh, they are uh, working with our, our codes enforcement on some drainage issues. There's going to be some working plans to help to take care of that. So, so far, everything's going good there. Great. Finance report, I'll defer to Gail. Um, you got your sales tax report. We're up a little bit this month from here today. I'm still trying to do some research into the sales tax, as I mentioned to you, the, the state law changed in October uh, in regards to what they call marketplace vendors and stuff. And uh, looking back, Anderson County, when I say Anderson County, in the rural section of Anderson County, over that 11-month period increased over 70%. Uh, 
of all the cities, the city of Clinton be increased the least. We only increased about less than 2%. So my concern is that the distribution now maybe is different and because the city, our zip code, expands out beyond. So I'm still trying to find out. It's very difficult to get information out of the Department of Revenue. <laughs> um, so I'm still working on that to see what what it is and if there's anything we can do about it. I, I don't know the answer yet. Um, but we are the lowest increase over that that time period. So something just doesn't seem quite, quite correct. Uh, we've got our taxes on the roll. Uh, we came in with a tax aggregate a little bit less than what we budgeted, but our collection rate, which I try to keep a little below what it actually is, should make up that difference. So we still should be okay on that. Um, if you look at our revenues, we're, we're still looking very good. Keep in mind, we've got, I think it's 251000 was this money that the state of Tennessee uh, just gave us, so to speak. I have applied for our CARES Act money, which is $150,000, a little over $150,000. I've applied for it. Hopefully, we'll see that pretty soon. Um, the other thing, I think Rogers mentioned this, I mean, I gave him incorrect information. We're fixing to issue a tax refund to Toyota Manufacturing of a little over $80,000. That's for years 2008 through 2012. Uh, my understanding is it has to do, it is Eagle Bend Manufacturing, the, and it's dyes that are located there. And I think their contention was how much they use those dyes. I'm not really sure, but they basically appealed from 2008 up to 2019, and we expect them to appeal 2020. So, so far, the administrative judge has ruled on to, up through 2012. Uh, a couple of more years are pending. So we could look at potentially another $100,000 refund if those are all settled. So we are looking at uh, maybe not accepting uh, the payment for the contended amount. What they're, uh, so we'll, we'll see if we can, because we have to pay an interest. So that $80,000 includes a little over $8,500 in interest. We pay them interest from the date of delinquency, which in our case is the end of February up to the date of payment. So just forewarning that that's on the horizon. Any questions for Gail? Thanks, Gail. Any questions for Roger? <coughs> Thank you, Roger. Under um, ordinances and resolutions, resolu um, resolution number 801, this is the Public Entity Partners Driver Safety Grant Program. Roger, you like to, or somebody like to speak on that? That's the one we do every year through PE Partners. I think this is an $8,000 for a 50-50 um, that we use. We, get, we're, we can get through three different grants through our insurance company. Okay. Hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Gann? Yes. Councilman Bright? Councilman Harrell? Yes. Councilman Staney? Yes. Councilman Hatmaker? Yes. Councilman Fair? Yes. Mayor Burke? Yes, resolution number 801 passes. Any old business before us? Any new business? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, we have in the audience a representative from SL, and he's doing his project for leadership of Anderson County. So his project was to visit uh, city council meeting. So I hope he's mo much more enlightened than he was when he came in here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Come, you can come back anytime. Fourth Monday every month. You have anything else, E.T.? That's it. <laughs> One thing I'd like to, to ask, um, we're still kind of uh, in an awkward situation with our Christmas parade. We're going to decide, Roger's going to decide here the next uh, few days if we're going to have a Christmas parade. But with the anticipation that we are going to have the Christmas parade, if it's all right with Jim, Jim, we'd like to ask you to be our Grand Marshal. Are you going to be in town first week in December? <laughs> I tell you what we'll do. We're going to go ahead and approve it. And if you can, you know you're the man. If not, we understand. Thank you very much. Okay. Here, do I hear a motion for Jim Sanderson to be our 2020 so Christmas second. Parade Grand Marshal? Let me finish. <laughs> motion a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. 
I also want to introduce Andrew. He's an intern that's been working with us for about the last six weeks. Uh, we got him through MTAS, so he's working, helping with Gil, working with some of our um, code codification. Uh, be with us through think, the end of this year. Good, good. Great. Is he free? Is that free labor? Oh, well, that's even better. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, anything else? Motion to adjourn? So, so it means adjourn.